Working with Arduinos and building things seems a lot more complicated than it really is. Everyone thinks you need a mechanical engineering degree on top of an electrical engineering degree on top of a computer science degree, and it's really not like that. Actually, most of the time I spend on my builds and on my projects is trying to minimize the amount of resources I have to use. So for example, I have a water bottle here where I connected a motor and I have a string attached and it will actually spray water automatically. And the other option, the one that I started off with, was having an air compressor connected to the bottle, which then put air into the bottle, which then I had to modify the, the, the tap here to spray out the water. And that would require me to walk around the house with an air compressor in one hand and a bottle in another. Where here, I just have a thin wire that can go to a battery or to something, a wall plug or whatever, and now I can control this water bottle with a really small motor on it. It's all about minimizing the cost of something while making it still as good. So when I built the, the Roomba robot, the one where instead of cleaning the room it makes the room dirtier, the focus was how do I 3D print the actual parts without spending $100 worth of plastic? How do I do it with only $10 worth of plastic? And that's what I spent a couple days figuring out as I was building it. Microcontrollers are simple computers that run simple, simple tasks in a loop. So you tell it, here's things I want you to do when you start, and then you tell it, here's things I want it to do, and you're gonna loop those over and over, and that's the two options you have. Here's an example I wrote. It's pretty much like a five line program. The first thing that happens is I tell it that an LED exists on pin 13, and that it's gonna be an output pin. Pretty much an input pin means it's accepting data, an output pin means it's putting out power. So if you wanted to power something on pin 10, you would say pin 10 is an output pin. But let's say you're receiving a signal on pin 5, you would say pin 5 is an input pin. Now that it does that in your setup, it's going to go to the loop and it's going to start the loop. And inside the loop, we have very simple instructions. The first step is a one second delay. The second step is on pin 13, you're going to put it on high, which high means high power. So we're putting high power on pin 13, which is going to be lighting up our LED. Then st third step is going to be a second and a half delay. And then the fourth step is going to be the same pin 13 that we put power in. We're going to tell it to turn off that power and go back to low. And then it's going to keep looping through that one second delay, power on, one second and a half delay, power off. Now all you have to do is go to the top left and click verify and it's going to compile your code. And if there's a mistake, it's going to let you know down below here. So if it passes, most likely there's no mistakes in your code and you're good to go. At least syntax errors. And then you're going to go and upload it. And if it uploads correctly to your Arduino, you should see it start working on your Arduino. You should see the lights turn on and off, which if we look right here, we see that it's not. So there's probably an issue in the hardware here. So I'm going to go and take my LED and actually reverse it because it's plugged in wrong. And now we can see that the light turns on and off repeatedly. It turns off for a second. It turns on for a second and a half. Now because of the nature of these boards, that's going to be looped over and over and over until either it, there's no more power or something breaks on the board or the LED burns out itself. Microcontrollers are actually all around us. Things like your fridge, your TV, your microwave, uh, your mouse, your keyboard. The only things that don't have microcontrollers are usually more complex computers like the one that I'm actually using to run my computer or the one that's inside of my camera. When it comes to the software end, which is where a lot of my viewership comes from, microcontrollers are pretty simple to understand. While it is C++, Arduino has its own version of C++ where they tweak certain things and make it really easy to understand. So if you came from JavaScript, you can understand this pretty easily. If you don't want to learn C++ and you just want to do it in your own language, there's plenty of ways to use any language possible to write code for an Arduino. If you don't want to use C++ and you want to use your favorite language, that's totally fine as well. There's plenty of ways to make a language work on your Arduino. We can always make videos on, there, on that in the future. If you're interested in actually building things, not just an LED that turns on and off, it's actually quite simple. You just have to go and get the pieces. I went on Amazon and for $50, I got myself one of these Arduino boards and a full kit. I'll put a picture on the screen of every sensor you can imagine for the fun little projects that you're going to build on your own. And I have actually used those sensors for real serious projects. Of course, I'm not putting these on a company building or anything, but I'm using them around my house. Like I have a motion detector outside holding one of the gates that if someone was to go through, I would get notified by a loud beep in my room. You can build something like an alarm clock, an electric door lock, an automatic fish feeder, anything pretty much of the sort that you can think of. There's so many options with all these sensors that you can get and pair together 
You can even go a bit more complicated and jump into a Raspberry Pi or jump into like an ESP32 board and go and add in a camera and make your own webcam or make your own security camera. You can do really a lot of things when it comes to that. There's also some great resources, websites where people post their projects and they post the diagram and they post the code for it and they tell you how to build the actual project so you can go and replicate it. And honestly, that's what I did. I built like four or five of those and then I learned pretty much how to do what I needed to do. And then I went and started building on my own thing. Post link below to all those resources and things that I can find that will help you guys out. I'm actually currently working on a Twitch bot that sabotages my stream. So if you wanna go check that out, I'm streaming on Twitch right now while I post this video. I've got a water spray that's gonna spray me in the face. I've got tasers that are gonna tase me while I'm doing things. Maybe we can paint on stream and you guys are just gonna be sabotaging me in the painting. That'd be really funny, I don't know. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, there's a Twitch link below. I'll probably be streaming on this channel very soon as well. If you enjoyed the video, if it helped you out, maybe check out those resources, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more. I wanna see you guys in the next one.